Hi everyone, welcome to the Everlasting Gospel, JesusTheGoodNews.com Weekly Bible Study. I am Jerry Lynn Davis, minister to the unsaved and humble servant of Master Jesus Christ. I will say it every time, folks. Hallelujah! Praise Lord Jesus Christ. Praise you, praise you, praise you. The only begotten Son of God the Father, folks. Fully God, fully man. The perfect Lamb of God who freely chose to lay his life down for all of us because we are all born into the genealogy line of Adam and Eve who fell from grace. We are spiritually dead and we all need Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ shed his blood, died on the cross, and arose triumphantly the third day to conquer sin and death, to destroy the works of the devil. Amen. Now it's up to us, folks, to use our free will to believe on Jesus Christ, Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And to choose freely to commit our lives to serve Jesus Christ, to be nurtured in the word of Almighty God, the only wisdom the only truth that exists in this entire world, folks. Knowledge is power. I encourage you today to grasp onto it, the pure word of Almighty God, the only book in this entire world that can benefit all of us for eternity, the only book in this entire world completely inspired by the Holy Spirit of Almighty God. That's why it's under attack, folks. The devil and those who serve him do not want any of us to have the knowledge of the Lord's Word. That's why the Bible's been under attack for generations and will continue to be under attack. That's why it's called hate speech. People want to stay in their sin and the living, breathing Word of Almighty God convicts them of their sin. They don't want to be convicted. They want to stay comfortably numb. They will think differently on Judgment Day. I encourage you today to get a Bible if you need one. If you're not saved, I encourage you today to consider where you want to spend eternity because hell is indeed a real place. Think about it, folks. Welcome to the channel. I invite you to like, share, and subscribe to partake of the pure word of Almighty God. This channel is dedicated to that and only that. To bring encouragement, to bring instruction, to bring warning. Amen. We're continuing this week in the book of Hebrews, chapter 8. A continuation of a letter the Apostle Paul had written to the converted Jews. Who were now part of the body of Christ. They walked away from the legalism of the Old Testament law. Because during Old Testament times, folks, only the Jews could receive atonement for their sins through the Levitical priesthood, through animal sacrifices. Now that Jesus Christ, the perfect Lamb of God, shed his blood, died on the cross for all of our sins, we now, all Jew and Gentile alike, have the same opportunity for forgiveness, salvation, and eternal life. Amen. Praise Jesus. I encourage you to get a Bible if you need one. Check out HTTPS, JesusTheGoodNews.com, a website that the Lord God blessed me with several years ago. On that website, the Lord has enabled me to provide free Bibles to whoever needs one. If you need one, request it. It's a gift from Almighty God to you. Ask him for understanding of his word. He is faithful and he will give you the understanding. He wants us all to understand it. Amen. Or borrow one, buy one. If there's one in your house, dust it off, open it up and start reading it. Amen. So Hebrews chapter 8. I'm going to pray over the message. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, dear Lord, for the blessing of another day. Thank you for your mercy and grace, dear Lord. 
Thank you for providing this opportunity for me to share your precious word with others, dear Lord. I pray you equip me to deliver this message so it's pleasing to you and reaches the hearts of those who need to hear it, Lord, and reaches their ears. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. I pray, Father God, that you continue to shine the light into the darkness of this world that is growing deeper and deeper and deeper into spiritual darkness. Remind us all, dear Lord, that we don't have to be slaves to the world system, that we don't have to be slaves to the prince of this world, but we, through your precious Son, have the opportunity to be free, to be blessed with the hope of eternal life, to be blessed with our hearts filled with joy and peace in the midst of everything going on around us, because we know once we are your children and we're saved because of Jesus Christ, we have the blessed assurance as long as we choose to freely stay on your pathway that leads to you through Jesus. Thank you, Father God, most of all for Jesus Christ, your precious only begotten Son. To you be all the glory, dear Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen, folks. So again, Hebrews chapter 8. Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. So Paul is continuing comparing the Levitical priesthood of the Old Testament to the priesthood of Melchizedek, without beginning, without end, the pre-incarnate Christ of the New Testament. Amen? So he's breaking it down to them. This is the sum. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, our high priest. As we read in the book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 12, But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Again, in the Old Testament law, the Levitical priesthood, sacrifices had to be offered to Almighty God on a regular basis to continue to atone for sins. Jesus Christ, who fulfilled the Old Testament by shedding his blood and dying on the cross or, and raising the third day from the dead, he fulfilled that, so it's no longer needed. He offered himself once for our sins, folks. It is accomplished. It is finished. We have the victory once we choose to believe on Jesus Christ and serve him. We are blessed for eternity. Amen. He sits on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. Hallelujah. A minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched and not man. Amen. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. Wherefore, it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. As we read in the book of Hebrews chapter 9, Verses 14 and 15. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament... They which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Eternal inheritance, folks. Grasp onto that gift today. Almighty God is extending it to all of us. Amen. Continuing here in Hebrews chapter 8. 
For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. In the Old Testament, the Lord God chose Moses as his servant to lead the Hebrews out of Egypt. 400 years of bondage. And he provided him the instructions to construct the tabernacle as the people were wandering in the desert as they were being led to the promised land. They needed to worship Almighty God. They needed to offer atonement for their sins through the high priest, the first one being Aaron. Seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of God. Amen. Praise Jesus. In Hebrews chapter 7, verse 12, we read, For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. And in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 3, And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest, of all. So the Old Testament model of the tabernacle, only the high priest could enter through the veil into the Holy of Holies, where the presence of Almighty God was, to offer the atonement of sins for themselves and for the people. Once Jesus Christ shed his blood, died on the cross, he said it is finished, he bowed his head and died on that cross, because he's fully God, fully man, sinless. The veil in the temple was torn in two, folks, according to scripture. That signified that Jesus Christ fulfilled the Old Testament. And the veil was torn, opening the way to Jew and Gentile alike. The Lord God and his divine plan bringing everything full circle through the genealogy of the Jews, Jesus Christ being of that genealogy line. Amen. Amen. Many people curse the Jews. They don't realize what they're doing. They're cursing Almighty God. They're cursing Jesus Christ. They're blaspheming the Holy Spirit, a sin which can never be forgiven, as it says in the Lord's Word. And they're cursing the Jews. And the Lord warns us of that as well. Anyone who curses the Jews will be cursed as well. Something to take very seriously, indeed. So Jesus Christ, the fulfillment of the Old Testament. Continuing here, going here into Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises, indeed. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second, indeed. If we go into the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17, this is the account of Jesus Christ giving his sermon on the mount, speaking to the Jewish people. Again, once the Old Testament was fulfilled when Jesus died on the cross for all of us, he is now speaking to everyone, Jew and Gentile alike. But in Matthew 5, 17, Jesus says, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Amen. Praise Jesus. And I'm going to go here into the book of Hebrews, chapter 7, verse 11. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, 
What further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? Amen. Praise Jesus. Continuing here in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 8, For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. Amen. So the people turned their back on the Lord. Think about this, folks. The Jewish people, the Hebrews, the Israelites, all one and the same, the nation of Israel, they are the only group of people that collectively spent time in the presence of Almighty God. Think about that. As he delivered them from the hands of Pharaoh, 400 years of bondage in Egypt, he led them through the desert to the promised land. They were in his presence. No other group of people in the entire world can claim that, folks. And now, again, through Jesus Christ, what he's done for all of us, we all are blessed with that gift to have the presence of the Holy Spirit dwelling in us once we're saved, to be called a child of Almighty God once we're saved, to have the blessed hope of forgiveness, salvation, and eternal life through Jesus Christ once we believe and commit our lives to serve Jesus Christ. Amen. Jew and Gentile alike, folks. I'm going to go here into the Old Testament book of Jeremiah, and that is chapter 31. So 31, 31. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. Israel is referred to as the bride. And in New Testament, we who are the body of Christ are also referred to as the bride. But in New uh, Testament times, again, Jew and Gentile alike, once we're saved, there's no difference in the eyes of Almighty God. During this time, before Jesus Christ died on the cross for all of us, Almighty God formed his covenant with the nation of Israel. He refers to them, he says, although I was a husband to them, they broke the covenant with him and served other gods like the heathen did, turn their backs. However, there will come a day when the Lord is reconciled with his people. Amen. Beautiful day. Praise Jesus. Continuing here in the book of Hebrews, chapter 8. Amen. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts and I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. A beautiful day, folks, when that happens. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. Praise Jesus. In the book of Romans, Chapter 11, verse 7, we read, What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. I'm also going to go here into the book of Romans, chapter 7, and that's um, verses 25 to 27. 
regarding what Paul is speaking about here. Praise Jesus. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord, so then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. That is something that we need to keep in mind. We serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin, indeed. Finishing up this chapter, this section of Paul's letter, we read here, For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities while I remember no more. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus Christ. In that he saith the new covenant, he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. Amen. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, this is a blessed promise for all of us once we are saved and serving Jesus Christ. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Amen. Again, think about it today, folks. Become a new creature in Jesus Christ. Leave your old life behind and become new in Jesus Christ. The only one that can bless us with forgiveness, salvation, and eternal life. The Lord is extending his gift of grace to all of us right now, folks. Grasp onto it. And again, realize our time on this earth is short. Think about it today. I pray that this message has encouraged you and inspired you to get a Bible if you need one. HTTPS, JesusTheGoodNews.com Again, I invite you to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Also, check out the website https jesus the good news dot com a lot of good stuff on there all from the holy spirit amen and i pray that the lord god continues to get your attention in jesus name i pray amen